What's on your radar, Ryan? Well, Rick Scott, who is the chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, is in the news for his new 11-point plan that is heavy on culture war and includes tax increases for half the country. So, but aside from what Scott wants to run on, there's the question of where he thinks the party can be competitive. I spoke with him recently and he shared some insight into where he's looking. And he told me that Senate Republicans plan to fight in every race taking place in a blue state that Biden won by 10 points or less, as well as some that he won by even larger margins. So what does that mean? The expansive view of the Senate map goes far beyond the handful of races watched closely by the political press, which is, say, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire, where Democrats are now defending narrowly held, uh, narrowly held, held seats. The broader view reflects Republican confidence in the wake of the Virginia gubernatorial election and the close call in New Jersey. Scott told me, quote, if you look at the Biden numbers, the Biden numbers are crating, cratering. The Democratic agenda or the Democrat agenda, he said, is not working. We're going to be competitive all over the country, he said, noting that he was particularly targeting, quote, any state that Biden won by less than 10 points. So Biden won Virginia by 10.1 percentage points, while Republican Glenn Youngkin beat Terry McAuliffe by two percentage points. Biden won New Jersey by 15.8 points, and Democrat Phil Murphy held on by just 3.2 points a year later. That's roughly a 12-point swing in both of those states. Scott, though, reached beyond the 10-point frame during our interview, noting that Senator Patty Murray, for instance, a Washington state Democrat first elected in 1992, was only up a few points in a recent public poll. Now, Biden won Washington state by nearly 20 points. Scott said, quote, if you look at the state of Washington, there's a public poll showing that Murray's only ahead to a generic opponent by three points, and we've got a great candidate up there, Tiffany Smiley, and we're getting more and more candidates every week, unquote. Murray is a party leader and also chairs the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. Now, for what it's worth, a recent poll has Murray up nine over Smiley. Biden carried Oregon by 16.1 points, though Scott argued it was in play. It's currently held by Senator Ron Wyden, chair of the powerful Finance Committee, who was first elected in 1996. Biden carried Colorado by 13.5 points. Senator Michael Bennett has represented the state since 2009. Now, Illinois went for Biden by 16.9 points, and Tammy Duckworth is up for re-election there. She was first elected in 2016. Now, the benchmark nightmare scenario for Democrats is 1980, the year Reagan was elected president, but also the year a generation of liberal lions shockingly lost their Senate seats. Republicans that year picked up 12 seats. George McGovern went from previous nominee for president to losing re-election. Warren Magnuson, who'd been, a, been in office since 1944, was ousted. And so was Gaylord Nelson. He was the founder of Earth Day and one of the pioneers of environmentalism, and Wisconsin voters tossed him out. Birch Bayh, a towering liberal force in the Senate dating back to 1962, lost to the empty suit of Dan Quayle in Indiana. Frank Church of the famous Church Committee, who ran a credible bid for president in 1976 and had been serving since the 1950s, was thrown out just four years later. So whether Republicans can recreate a similar catastrophe for Democrats will depend on some unknowable factors. Will Democratic voters snap back into partisan alignment for federal rather than state elections? Does former President Trump discourage people from voting in rigged elections? And who emerges from Republican primaries? The obscene amount of money that conservatives spent attempting to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom went up in smoke when Republicans failed to field a viable alternative. Had a Glenn Youngkin rather than Larry Elder been on the ballot, Newsom may have fared worse, though given the partisan lead of the state, ousting him was always an extreme long shot. Now, Scott expressed confidence, as any campaign chair would at this stage, and said that the party will lean heavily into inflation, school issues, crime, and the border. He said, quote, the model is talk about what you're going to do to deal with inflation, what you're going to do to deal with job creation, what you're going to do with school choice, what you're going to do to keep people safe, and what you're going to do to make sure we have a secure border. So this, this interview was about two weeks ago before he laid out his 11-point plan, which Mitch McConnell kind of insisted that he not do. Because McConnell's like, look, Democrats are in such bad shape. All we have to do is put up candidates like a Tiffany Smiley, somebody who isn't obviously objectionable, doesn't have a Larry Elder, <laughs> doesn't give off Larry Elder crazy vibes, and just say we're not Democrats, just do that. And so 
that, that's his position, except he put out this 11-point plan. Now, nobody's paying that close of attention, so he can probably uh, escape some of the own goals well, that were included in there. And most of the plan is what he just what he talked about in that right. interview. I mean, it, it's not a... It, right, so that, McConnell's right. good with that. Say, say, those, yeah. say those surface level things. But when you get into details like everybody should be paying taxes and half the country doesn't pay taxes. Yeah. And you're like, well, so you want tax increases for half the country? He's like, no, I didn't say that. Like, no, you just said that. Then, right. then you get caught up in your own work. I think liberals are paying a lot of attention to that. And, mm-hmm. and you're sure, maybe that's something that, that pushes moderate independence away it's from yeah, but it's a embrace. Tiny. It's a small thing. Yeah. And, and the, the, thing, the thing is mostly focused on the schools, the crime, right. that kind of stuff, which is just the Republican Party understands that this is their way back to power. Right. Frustrate, you know, some lingering frustration with pandemic restrictions and the, the and the perception that's not wrong, that things are getting worse in terms of well, inflation and, and crime. Yeah. Crime is going to be a big one. We saw we remember yeah. the, the backlash to actually high crime levels throughout the 70s, right. 80s, the backlash that eventually generated, but, you know, g- empowering some of the Republicans you were, just, part of that. Yeah. you were just referring to. Yeah. And it's not, you can't argue against it. Things have gotten worse out there in, in real ways. And so what do you think of some of these states? So Oregon, for instance, extremely yeah. conservative eastern part of the state. And then it's got Portland, uh, which makes the eastern part of the state more conservative because they hate Portland so much. Portland's you know, been a mess. On the other hand, Ron Wyden is a super well-known and bizarrely popular he is Senator popular. I have Oregon. a hard time imagining Ron Wyden losing. What about Michael He's Bennett popular. in Colorado? Yeah, or Tammy that, Duckworth in Illinois. Yeah, there. I think there would be trouble. But I think it actually hugely depends on whether it's Trump or not. Trump right. will scare <clears throat> Democrats straight. Or, right. You know, whatever Fine, whatever Michael terminology Bennett. you want right. to you want to use will drive them to the poll and will give people pause. There, I know people who will vote for gene- want a generic, just want an R. Just want to vote for an R. They're done with the pandemic. They hate the economy. They think Biden has no idea what's going on. I think they're probably right about all those things. But they cannot vote for Trump because Trump isn't is an odious. He's offensive. Buffo- to them. He, he's, yeah. you can't, he's just not a likable person. I, and I know that there like there are Trump voters that don't understand that because there are people who just, just worship Trump yeah. and they don't yeah. understand that they're about like thirty percent of the country. And those people were, are going to vote for any R for the most part at, th- right. at this point. Even if there were some. <clears throat> I think you know you could well, look at several that, yeah. election cycles ago. Maybe there were there were de- you know there were Democrats or Bernie voters or Labor people or whatever who were only going to vote for Trump. That was the only Republican they were going to cross mm. parties for. I think by now those people are basically Republicans. They've kind and of been they're, bought yeah. They're part of the party and they're going to vote for unless it's you know the most I, I offensively like white collar union busting talking down to the working class type Republican. Uh, the most country club, <laughs> who I who I like, but but right, sure, uh, Mitt Romney on steroids right. might turn them away, but anyone else, any other Republican, is going to enjoy their support. I suspect, yeah. regardless. So you don't need Trump anymore. All he can do is hurt. But they yeah. also can't say no to him, uh, apparently. Right. So if he wants it, it's his. <laughs> what about Washington State? I don't know. I mean, they won by twenty. Biden won it's, by it twenty seems points. Hard it's to, hard to close. And New Jersey is a good case because it was 16, yeah. like that was about a 16 point gap and Republicans closed at yeah. three, which is impressive. And New, the New Jersey governor, yeah. uh, Murphy, was, was one of the most hardcore lockdown mm-hmm. masking supporters. I think he might have engendered a little bit of uh, a, a greater backlash than your average Dem because he was such a militant. And that goes to the state versus those. federal. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the voters who might have switched voted for Murphy in the past, voted against Murphy this time. But if it's a federal election and control of the Senate is up, you're like, yeah. OK, I don't like a lot of what Murphy has done. Yeah, he's off, he's backed off it since then. And I would rather have Democrats in control. And people who are nervous about Trump would say, I'd rather have Democrats in control as a check against. Yeah. But I do think that these I, the other problem is that for Democrats is that a lot of these candidates are not practiced. Like, and that was the problem in 1980. Gaylord Nelson hadn't run a campaign in decades. Right. They weren't expecting they it. Didn't, they didn't think. They were like, I'm Gaylord Nelson. Yeah. It's did Earth Day. Nobody's going to knock me out of the Senate. Uh, you know, Dan Quayle. 
Birch Bayh thinks he's going to lose to Dan Quayle? People no were starting to, cor and by people I mean the voters, were starting to correctly sort themselves into the right parties, right? You used to, it's funny now, but you used to, people would vote all over the place on their ballot. They would vote for a Republican, then they would vote for a Democrat. They'd vote for a Republican that they, right. they just like Split the way pickets, he looks yeah. and the way he speaks or something. And then they'd vote for a Democrat because, oh, well, he was good on some one issue I like. Now, most people are just voting for the Republicans or for the Democrats because they are a Republican or they are a Democrat and they agree with basically everything in that party. And there's a small, a much smaller, smaller every year slice of the electorate that is genuinely up for grabs. Yeah. And the, part, the Democrats at the time were a weird party still. One of the right. senators who lost was Herman Talmadge from Georgia, so, who was an arch segregationist and whose father was like a white supremacist and also was governor of of Georgia. And so you have Frank Church and Herman Talmadge in the same party, which wasn't sustainable, obviously. And it wasn't sustained. I, I think the Republican strategy is clear. Lean into education and school choice. Talk tough on crime. Talk about fixing inflation and hope Donald Trump is abducted by aliens. <laughs> well, he, he, did, he did all of that, except then he wants to name the wall after Trump. Can't help himself. It's the notice me senpai sort of. Anyway, uh, looking forward to what's on your radar. That's coming up next.